our um, advocacy workshop. We're, we're very glad you're here. And our goal tonight is for you to come away with some information about real life in the legislature, as well as the way tools you can use to become an effective advocate. And tonight's agenda, um, as you can see, uh, we're doing this right now, welcome. And then Carrie Lancaster, who um, you all know is the advocacy chair of League of Women Voters of Kansas. She's gonna talk about advocacy tips. And then we're gonna hear from Kansas representative Susan Ruiz, who's district 23 in um, the Kansas legislature and Kansas Senator John Scooball, who represented um, District 11. And we're really, we're fortunate to have them come to, to sort of the front lines of, of the legislature. And then um, there'll be question and answer session at 6.50 and, um, and Amber, you'll kind of moderate or you'll kind of organize that or, um, and, and if you have questions also, put them in the chat so that we can be sure and get everybody. And then um, Carrie will follow up talking about some specific opportunities for advocacy that in terms of, of individual activities as, as well as groups. And then at 7.30, we'll be done. So, um, and tip, Zoom tips. <laughs> which is hilarious for me to give this, but <laughs> the meeting is being recorded. Keep yourself muted and use the chat box to ask questions throughout. And then of course, keep your comments respectful and nonpartisan. And now I'll introduce Carrie, who a lot of you know, but um, let me tell you a little bit about her. She's the advocacy chair for the League of Women Voters of Kansas, and she's a native of Tulsa and earned her bachelor's degree in merchandising and retail from Washburn University. She worked for 32 years for the BNSF Railway in accounting and purchasing, and then returned to Washburn for elementary education degree, and then taught to kindergarten and second grade and which I think particularly prepared her for lobbying in the Kansas legislature. We thank you for sharing your considerable experience with us tonight. Um, also, when, when the legislators join us, I'll, I'll tell you more about what they've done. So carry, carry on. Okay, thank you very much. I'm happy that you asked me to be here. Um, and share with you what I've learned so far. Uh, let me just do this and get my... And, oops, got to do a little more here. Okay, and so we're gonna work on advocacy tips tonight. Now, there's a big difference between advocating and lobbying. When you think of advocating, think of education. You are educating lawmakers on our positions. That's what we support is bills that reflect our positions. When you think of lobbying, that's more of a direct ask to lawmakers about a specific issue or piece of legislation. Um, in the league, we have one lobbyist and that is our co-president, Seal King. Now, Seal has gone to the Secretary of State's office and registered herself as a lobbyist and our league has paid for her lobbyist button that she wears every day to legislator, sure, so they know who they're dealing with. Um, we don't 
do things like take legislators out to dinner or golf or things like that, um, you know, but she can talk to them about legislation. And the main thing we need to remember is that the presidents speak for the league. As members, we can quote the, our positions and then we can say, this is what the league's position is. And right now I'm going to uh, talk to you about how that affects me and what I think about it but it is not the view of the league. Be sure you do that when um, you talk to the legislators and I'll give you some more tips um, later on. And next we're going to go, okay. Thing, your library, I call it, is the kansaslegislature.org website. You will find practically everything you'll need by mastering the website. And of course it has um, tabs of peer, house, senate, legislators, committees, bills and laws, journals, calendars, um, and then there's research and historical. So this first tab we're gonna look at is calendars. We have a House and a Senate calendar. Um, and so you're gonna look at that each day, uh, check the calendar to see what is going on. It will have all your committee meetings and it will have what's gonna go on on the floor. Um, so we check that. And after we decide which committee we want to watch, we go to the committee tab at the top of the main website. And underneath it, there is the standing committee. Those are the committees that will meet several times a week to make decisions. And this, we're gonna work on this first. We may need some of these others later, but right now we're just gonna be interested in, in learning what to do with the standing committee. When you find committees, this is the committee's page. You will notice that some have, there's committees in the House and the Senate, and some have similar names, like the House has agriculture, but on the other hand, the Senate has agricultural and natural resources. So they're similar. Um, so you have to know whether you're looking at the committee in the House or the committee in the Senate. And when you, I'll show you later about our uh, Google form to fill out, I would appreciate it if you would say the House Agriculture Committee or the Senate Agricultural and Natural Resources. As we go down, notice that education, the names are exactly the same. So you kind of have to make note of which one you're wanting and which one you're at. Then when you click on that committee name, um, whoops, sorry, move my mouse and it did me in. Okay. Okay. I click on that committee name and I get the committee page. And on the committee page, if you look down at the bottom, you'll notice there are sponsored bills. That means that there is a group of legislators that are sponsoring. They want to see this bill move out of committee and onto the floor. And so those are the more important ones because they have traction by having um, other legislators. The ones that are just bills in committee uh, some of them, they are lone legislators that want something. It may be great, but unless they can get um, some other people to agree with them, then it's they're kind of dead on arrival. I mean, they, they may not even get the hearing. And right now, our committee chairs has, um, like in this committee, Steve Hubert, they have a huge amount to say about whether a bill does get a hearing or not, you know. Um, 
so that's important to remember. When you're on this page, you notice you can see all the committee members and the staff. That helps you if you need to write somebody an email, just click on these links. All the ones in blue are links and you click on there and it will take you to their page. And again, you'll see their email. And so you can just click on that. Your email form will come up and you can go ahead and send your message. Um, where I've got the big red arrow, that's telling you, you can click on each one of those links and get the agenda for the committee for that week, a minutes, testimony. And there's a little one down underneath that says action index. And I'm gonna talk a little more about action index, but what you need to remember right now, it's, a, it's either a paper book if you go to the Capitol or here they have a button you can click on. And in numerical order in, in front, and in the back, it has them by topic order. And here it is where you can find the actions index. You go one right of committees to bills and laws and go down and you'll see where the red arrow is. There's action and subject index report. So you just click that and you can see all the bills in either numerical or topic order. And you might pay a little bit of attention here. There's one down beneath that that says how a bill becomes law. That's very interesting. Uh, click on that and it'll give you um, kind of a map and take you right through it. Um, next is the Kansas Constitution which I have used when I was listening maybe to the House or the Senate chamber to see what the Constitution actually does say. So that's an interesting. Okay, now if you bring up a bill, uh, I've got one up here that was passed a couple of years ago, um, something that's real important you can go down to the bottom where it says bill history right by the big red arrow and it will start and it will go in chronological order up to the top which is the most current thing so you can watch this bill from introduction in committee clear through um, where it's voted on by both sides passes and then goes to the governor's office and she goes ahead and signs it enrolling the bill if you look above there on bill versions, um, I like that because it has the PDF file of the bill that was introduced, the whole bill. And then above that, it has the document of the bill that's been amended and is finally, um, in this case, enrolled. The SN is supplementary notes. FN is physical notes, how much it's going to cost us. And then there's a summary of the legislation. So this bill page can really be important. Also, again, you could check, click up the top where it says current sponsors and original sponsor. That way, you know, does it have committee support? A lot of times they'll say the committee. Well, that means that whole um, in this particular case, this was, um, I think this was education. Anyway, it would have that whole committee's name listed as supporting the bill. Okay, this is my favorite new toy. Um, thank goodness with the CARES Act, we received enough money to go through and uh, update all the technology in 13 of the uh, committee rooms in the House and in the Senate chambers this year. And it's just wonderful, I think. Um, so you go up at the very top where it says audio video, click on it and it'll drop down and your big red arrow shows you where it says House and Senate video. 
You click on that, it takes you to the Kansas Legislature YouTube channel. That was KS and then Legislature, and it's on the YouTube channel. You could subscribe to it so you get everything so you won't miss anything. You can listen to all these committee meetings uh, as they're happening live. You can see everything, most everything. Sometimes I have a hard time seeing if the whole committee is there, especially if it's a large group and they're spaced out. But like one the other day, the chair called on each one of them. So I could go ahead and note that. So it's a wonderful way to listen. Um, you can listen at your convenience. It doesn't have to be nine o'clock in the morning. Um, you could even, I've even gone through, and if I was looking for something, I could even stop or go forward, you know. So I just love this way. You do not have to go to the Capitol now, but you can keep track of what's going on in the legislature. And that's really important for us in advocacy because I know nobody has time to go to the legislature in Topeka every day. I mean, that would be crazy. So, but you, you can look at it here and watch it when it's convenient for you. Okay, now we're down to the part of how to visit a legislator in person, which is very limited in the 2021 session. Uh, I think I think there is a possibility that if you were to um, set it up and you could get an email, you could present it at the north side, you know, and they would let you in. I just read that yesterday or day before. But basically, I'm sure most people, since they do not mandate mask, probably don't want to go to the legislature at all. And I don't blame them. Uh, I did contact a legislator's office and they are willing to set up a Zoom meeting with that legislator uh, at a certain time. So you have to set that up with the committee assistant in the office. Um, and then you do have to have your own Zoom account. Uh, it doesn't have to be a paid one, but you could have your own Zoom account to go in at the appropriate time and meet with your legislator. Uh, one thing that's in caps up here at the top is always go in a group of two or three. So if you're going to do a Zoom meeting, you would have to find a couple of buddies um, that would be able to go to the meeting with you through Zoom. You'd send them an invitation. Um, so that way they won't be misunderstandings, you will have witness to what you said and so forth. I never had that really be a problem, but we don't want it to be a problem. And again, at the top in red, all individual advocacy is personal. You don't speak for the league unless authorized. So unless you talk to Seal King, our co-president, and she says, you know, well, that would be fine. She would like for you to go there and speak. Um, then that's okay. But basically, the president of our state league or the president of your Johnson County League speaks for your league. So, um, you know, you don't want to take away or have them speaking, for, you know, what you want. Anyway, um, you always, you know, this meeting probably won't last any longer than about 10 minutes. So, you know, it's got to be concise. It's got to be specific. Um, and most of all, uh, even if you have to bite your tongue, try to be polite. <laughs> okay, and of course, calls are still welcome. When you call, you still need to prepare what you're going to say um, on the call. So, you know, you need to study the bill out. Um, Maybe read it through. Well, definitely read it through. Check the newspapers. Maybe check your legislator that you're calling. Um, look at their webpage. Maybe Google them. 
Get it all prepared in your mind as to what you want to say. And then uh, you state the issue. You've got to be very concise. Uh, it probably will be a five minute call. And you will, I would say 90% of the time, you will talk to the legislator's office, leaving them the message and they will convey your message to the legislator. And you might get an email or something after that. Um, again, we're going to be um, firm but courteous. And if all else fails, say, well, I'm sorry, I guess we have to agree to disagree, but this is what I believe. So. And next, letters to the editor. Uh, that can really bring some support outside the league, support to um, your cause. There may be other people that aren't league members, but they do agree with um, the letter. It should be, again, concise. Most papers, um, two to 300 words is all they want. I understand that your Kansas City Star has a special link that you can click on to write a letter to and submit the letter to the editor. After you submit it uh, through this link or through an email, you will get um, a return email letting you know that they got your letter. When they decide they want to publish it, then they will honestly call you in person just to verify that, yes, you did write that letter. Twitter is not something you, it's optional, but on the other hand, it's very helpful because if you're watching a committee meeting or listening to a chamber, legislators will oftentimes tweet and you can get their opinions on what's going on. I also like to recommend that when you're in Twitter, you follow these journalists that I've listed below. They're seasoned journalists, and they will also comment during meetings or when the House and Senate meet. So that makes it, um, it's kind of nice, you know, to get what they're seeing, you know going on because they've had many years to watch this. Okay, well, here is a list of bills of interest because they do reflect our position. In fact, right now, what is going on, um, I'd like for you to follow is the HB 2006. You probably read about it in your newspaper today or in the Kansas Reflector about the designation of um, Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. And then there's another one affecting that. Um, oh, okay, 2008, uh, providing for the Attorney General to coordinate training for law enforcement agencies um, to find missing and murdered Indigenous people. And, and from what I've read today, that the legislature uh, lot, it's getting a lot of traction, so we'll have to watch that. There are a lot of other ones here that affect our uh, lead positions, but that's something to be in, kept in mind is, you know, it, are these bills something that we are interested? Does it reflect our positions? And our positions are up on our website. I will show you that in just a little bit. Okay, this is the Google Doc that Jacqueline um, Lightcap and I created. Um, it is on our main uh, League of Women Voters Kansas website under Issues and Advocacy. And then you just go down it and you find Kansas Legislative News. Okay, this is the Kansas Legislative News page. So on it, you notice that you will find the observer's reporting form down at the, uh, in the middle of the page. Um, 
and you can double click on it. I'll show you what it looks like here in just a few minutes. But we've got Policy Watch. That's what our consultant, Paul Johnson, puts out every week. We can read his Policy Watch updates. And, um, you know, that is something you should do on Friday. Just make a habit of reading his Policy Watch. That will let you know uh, the bills and what's going on with them, the ones that we're interested in. And let's see, um, we've got something on the Observer Core. And then, okay, here is the Observer's form. It's very easy to use. And you just go from one um, text box to the next, filling it in. Some of them are simple yes and no questions. Um, answer. And you do have plenty of space to write in the one that is the observer's report box down at the very bottom. You don't have to write directly while you're on your computer. You can print one of these off, then fill in the blanks and then go back in and enter it onto this form in the computer. When you're all finished, you hit submit. One copy goes to me because I can't watch every committee, so I need help. You know, uh, right now I'm concentrating on federal and state affairs and uh, the judicial committee in the Senate. But, you know, I need some help too. So if you could watch, a committee, you know, once a week or something like that, and then turn in a report, I would be very appreciative. Um, and so, you know, when you would get, you submit it, I get a copy, and then you get a copy for your records. Okay, now we're down to, let's see, what we want to do. Okay, I think now we are ready to hear from our guest legislators. So we'd like to welcome Susan Ruiz and John Scoobo. And our first questions, unless do you have other introductions for them or we're just going on, okay. Carrie, okay. um, you can stop sharing your screen now. Okay. And um, Kathleen, do you want yeah. to do the introduction? Okay. Um, Representative Susan Ruiz has joined us, and we're grateful for her coming. Um, she's she was first elected to the Kansas House in 2018, and was recently reelected in 2020 for the 21 legislature. She's a daughter of a Mexican-born immigrant father and a Texas mother and has a unique perspective on multicultural issues. Um, a licensed clinical social worker, she holds a master's degree in social work from Our Lady of the Lake University in San Antonio. And uh, she recently was recognized by the National LGBTQ Victory Fund. Um, a group working to sustain equality by increasing the number of openly LB, LB, LGBTQ officials. And Susan, we thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. And then also we have Senator John Skubal who served the Senate District 11 from 2018 to, or 2017 to 2020. Um, prior to becoming a Senator, he served on the Overland Park City Council and the Overland Park Planning Commission. And in December of 2020, <clears throat> he too got a reward. He received the Richard Worrell Community Legacy Award in recognition of his work in building community through education, business development, and community spirit. So we again, we appreciate your being here. And Carrie, I'll let you start start the conversation with some questions. It looks like we've had several come to the chat too, so. Okay, 
Let me see, just a second. I'm having a little technical problem. I accidentally bumped something and <laughs> now I got a problem, but it'll just take me a second here. Ah, there you are. I almost lost you guys. Don't want to do that. We've been waiting all this time to hear you. Um, I would like for, I guess I'll let Susan go first for ladies first and tell us about your day as a legislator, the representative. Um, are you talking about like a typical day? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, it's not very typical these days. <laughs> um, it is very, um, you know, we're running from one thing after another and it, and, and trying to um, answer emails and, and um, phone calls and things like that. But uh, generally, most of the representatives are, unless they're in leadership, are assigned to three committees. And these are committees that we have mm -hmm. submitted to saying that we were interested in, in, in those particular committees. I serve, uh, I'm the ranking member on the Veterans and Military Committee, and that meets in the morning at nine o'clock. Um, like it's, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays basically for that committee. I'm also on the Health and Human Services Committee and that meets daily from 1.30 to about three o'clock. And then at 3.30 is the, my third committee and that also meets every day and that's the Social Services Budget Committee. So, you know, right now, because we're also beginning to, to work on the budgets, we're having to, to also listen to uh, a lot of input regarding budgets. And, um, you know, so we will listen to many organizations, uh, including KDHE, KDADS, uh, uh, with um, them talking about uh, the governor's budget and and whatever those numbers might be and why they need the amount of, of funding that they're asking for. Um, so, and we're also listening to a lot of organizations who are again, are appealing that we, that we vote favorably for, for increase, most of the time it's increased funding for a lot of agencies. Um, um, because most of my work is all in social services, it's all for the social services uh, budget. So we also have what's called agenda uh, on the Democrat side, on the Republican side, it's called calendar meeting. And so if we know we're going to be on the floor for um, any kind of uh, debating on bills, we will all meet as our, at our caucus um, membership. Right now, we're mainly doing it by Zoom. Um, and we, are, we will talk about whatever bills might be proposed and how we might vote for that. We will get, you know, pros and cons regarding any of those bills. It's really up to us, uh, every individual legislator, to decide how they will vote on that. But there's always, um, you know, there's always at least one person that is connected to a bill in some kind of way that can give us lots of details. Uh, because, you know, as you saw on on um, um, on the presentation, there are a lot of bills sitting out there already. Um, mm -hmm. and, really difficult to to look at those and know all the ins and outs. So we, we really do depend on our agenda. And then we're on the floor. And so we might be debating bills. We were on the floor today um, for many hours um, and because of, of primarily having to look at bills that deals with the emergency, the governor's emergency orders, and also just for the rules of the house. And so there was a lot of debate about that. And, uh, and you know, uh, uh, you know, it's really interesting how we are having to sit on the floor right now. We can't all sit at a regular desk because uh, we can't social distance that way. Um, and for the, and I will say that for the most part, all the legislators are wearing masks. But there's a group of about 18 to 20 maybe who are who will who totally refuse to wear masks. Mm -hmm. um, so be, we've had to be spread around. So if you know what it's like to be in the chamber, you know that there's a gallery, there's a gal there's an east gallery and there's a uh, north gallery. And um, the east gallery is the, is the largest of the galleries. So we're also assigned upstairs and mm -hmm. it's very, very different. You don't have a desk, we have laptops. It's not the most comfortable place to be, no. but you know, we're, we're up there. Um, but what's concerning for me is there's probably about 
15 to 18 of those representatives that are refusing to wear masks are up there. Um, mm. And so <clears throat> we're trying to be as careful as we possibly can. So we're all just trying to get along right now and <laughs> trying to figure out how you vote remotely. And there's all kinds of things we're having to figure out right now. Um, but we will do it. We're sticking in. We're no quitters. We, we will figure out how we're going to do this, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of patience on our part. Okay, thank you. Um, th that's really interesting. Um, John Scoobel is a senator. We would like to ask you uh, what you recall about a typical day in the Senate. Well, my day would start with uh, um, seven o'clock into the Capitol, uh, trying to handle emails, trying to handle what I could get done before my first 830 meeting, um, which was transportation. Uh, I have a very keen interest in transportation. Uh, from there, normally we were, we were in that meeting for at least an hour. Uh, I would go all the way downstairs from the fifth floor to the first floor for ethics and local government. And that meeting always lasted mm -hmm. an hour. Uh, from there, I'd get back on the elevator, up the stairs to Ways and Means, which was always at least an hour and a half. Um, and if I had a chance, I would run down and try and grab a little bit of lunch. Uh, and then I would go to um, another meeting. Uh, and, and that meeting would have been uh, uh, utilities. Mm -hmm. And then to the Senate floor, uh, where we would be anywhere from, oh, 15 minutes to eight hours, uh, depending on what was going on. But uh, the, the days are full. Um, Ways and Means is almost like a, a completely separate uh, entity. I chaired uh, the education budget, the transportation budget, and I sat on four other budgets that I had hour-long meetings for. So um that was that was really a task uh and i thoroughly enjoyed it but um i would leave the capital usually at 6 or 6 30 at night uh to go home and and uh i would walk by wendy's or uh, wherever and grab a sandwich and um go to my room where i would spend uh, at least three hours reading bills and preparing for the next day uh, so so it was a full full day Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And yes, it sounds like long hours. We appreciate what you guys do because it is a sacrifice to do all that. Um, now let's see. How about, do, could you tell me, uh, and I guess we'll, I'll start with John this time. Um, is there a favorite way to interact with your constituents? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time with this one, but uh, if I received a handwritten letter, it mm -hmm. took precedent over everything that I answered, um, and I would always take the time to do a handwritten letter. If you send me a form letter on an email, um, at sometimes I'll get a hundred to hundred and fifty of those in one day, uh, mm -hmm. and they all say the very same thing. I put as about as much effort into that as you put into it to send to me. And most of those were deleted. Um, what I liked were people that had a problem that potentially I could help them with. And a lot of problems don't have answers. Uh, but the big thing is, is that, that um, you need to put a little bit of effort into this to get something out of it. And form mm -hmm. letters are not, and form emails are not what I spent much time with. Well, thank you for saying that, because I know that's really important. I left off what I usually say about writing you a letter because I know that the mail is really slow now and you have to know that the vote is going to be like a week or maybe a little more away to be sure you've contacted your legislator and they've had time to review it and so but I agree with you it is it is a very impressive when a person takes the time to um write a formal letter. Uh, let's see. And what do you suggest, Susan, about um, the way you'd like to be contacted? Um, my preference is, is email. And um, I, um, 
if a person doesn't really have access to like a computer, then a written a written letter is fine. Um, there's just so much that we are doing and we're on the go that it's it is. I can get my emails on my laptop, but I also have it on my phone. So I can get to those emails much quicker. Um, so I, one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to uh, have my uh, administrative assistant do is to ask the person, you know, which, which is easier for you? If you can write an email, that would be fantastic. Um, if it's a message, you know, that they just want to call, the person wants to call and just have them take a message, that's fine too. It's whatever is easier, but for me to get to it quicker, is for me to have an email and I ask people to in on the subject line to put something like I'm your constituent and I favor this or I oppose this. Um, my constituent emails, I'm, I'm going to get to those quicker too. I, those are my priority. Um, and, uh, you know, we do, uh, you know, we do get lots of form kind of kind of letters and, and you'll it's easy to tell on the subject line. I know it's, it's another form letter. I open up every one of them. However, I don't care if it's a form letter or not. I open it up. Uh, how I respond to it could be different than when it's something that's a little bit more personalized from a constituent. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear from both of you uh, about that because it's very important how we connect with our legislators. Um, could I ask, um, I guess I'll go back to, um, John and ask, and I kind of think I already know since you prefer a handwritten letter to somebody just sending a form letters. And if I may say to all of our big people, yes, 100% stay away from those form letters, you know. But do you have any other pet peeves about being contacted uh, uh, from? constituents, John? No, no it's, it's part of the job. I, you know, no one likes to be taken advantage of and no one likes to be talked down to. But the big thing about it is, is that it's just how people respond to you. Uh, and I, I try and read everything that's sent to me, except the form emails. And uh, mm -hmm. you'll, I don't know why they haven't taken me off of the uh, website, the state website, but I'm still listed as Senator from District 11, and I've received 50 emails today about the abortion vote, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I've answered all of them with the form letter that I am not your senator. Uh, <laughs> I voted uh, no on that bill, value them uh, both uh, last year, and if mm -hmm. I were still there, I would vote no, but I'm not. Uh, you need to contact your senator. And I totally understand that, and that, you know, people, um, who do that, they haven't paid very much attention to the news or they would know that you're not their senator. <laughs> you know, um, what happens is, and, 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 this is, and this is a sad state, but uh, we do not get people actively engaged in primaries and mm -hmm. Republicans are elected in primaries. And I get a lot of people saying, I took it for granted that you would be elected. Uh, so mm -hmm. I didn't vote. Uh, and if you do anything with your, your uh, group, tell them that all elections are important, but primaries are extremely, extremely important. Uh, and, and I was beat in the primary uh, almost two to one. Uh, and uh, I don't know that I would have won that primary, even if we would have had a, a larger contingent of vote voters. But you don't want 30 percent of the people sending someone to Topeka or to Washington, D.C., Exactly. Yes. And that is something that league stands for and will fight tooth and toenail to try to get people out um, and get them to the primaries. Um, we've done a lot of different things this past year. I've been in like car trains and going through neighborhoods and letting them know that the primary is coming and so forth. Um, but anyway, how about you, Susan? Um, what would be your pet peeves? Um, you know, I'm kind of easy going. It, it doesn't, I don't have a lot. I, I think just being disrespectful, especially mm -hmm. to 
to our staff. I, I, I can't put up with that. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm a social worker. I've, I, I can, I know how to deal with people and, and it does, you know, if a person is angry and I can, I can listen to the anger and then be able to try to, you know, put in my two cents into it and be able to, you know, maybe compromise in some kind of way and maybe see eye to eye on something. But I, but for a person to be disrespectful to our staff uh, that um, I, I can't deal with that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I would like to know, John, has any uh, constituent ever changed your mind on an issue? Uh, you know, probably more so on the, on the city council than in Topeka. Um, mm -hmm. The people that I would talk with in, in Overland Park when I was on the city council usually was face to face. And in Topeka, mm -hmm. very seldom did I get the opportunity to talk to people face to face. And when I did, mm -hmm. it was five minutes go uh, because you just don't have the time to, to do that. Uh, and one thing that I had a lot more time because city council had one um, meeting on a Wednesday, a week off, another meeting on a Wednesday, and then two meetings on Monday. So it wasn't the helter skelter that you have in Topeka. But in mm -hmm. Topeka, uh, I, like Susan, had a contingency of people uh, that I went to. Uh, I know about transportation and cars and, and how we can move them around. Uh, but I don't know anything about medical uh, mm -hmm. stuff. And so Barbara Bouillet was my go-to for medical things. Yes. Uh, social issues, uh, Carolyn McGinn, when she was cheering Ways and Means, uh, we lost Laura Kelly and we lost uh, uh, Vicki Schmidt uh, to midterms uh, where they were both propelled into, into state offices. And they were her go-to people on social uh, affairs. And so she put me into social affairs and it was kind of like, a fish out of water. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. spent a great deal of time trying to get educated. And mm -hmm. what I think that you want are people that know something about an issue or right. the subject matter rather than trying to educate them while they're, they're feeding them from a fire hose. Uh, so th those were difficult times for me. And again, mm -hmm to change my mind on a subject. If you came to me with a, a transportation issue, um, I would listen to you, but usually my mind was pretty much made up on what I was gonna do with transportation. Ways and means, mm -hmm. when you came to me with an issue with schools, I knew how I was going to uh, put together the budget for schools. And I don't know if anybody paid any attention, but uh, the budget that I put forth that was sent out of Ways and Means, um, or schools got us out of the courts with uh, the Supreme Court. And to make sure that that passed, I knocked on 39 doors of all of the senators in, in the body to ask them if this was a bill that they could support, and if not, what I could do to get their vote. Uh, so, so those are things that people don't see uh, that just take a great deal of time. And uh, it's... Uh, five minutes in some offices and 30 minutes in others. And so you just don't have a lot of time for people to lobby you and change your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, that's something we all want to know. Um, okay, and let's see, how are some suggestion about how to deal with an elected official, and maybe this is just because they're busy, but one that won't call you back or meet with you. Susan, could you maybe fill us in on what you think about that? I can try. I, I get this question all the time, it, and it's an, in, um, I'm embarrassed for us that, that we I get these kinds of questions. Um, I haven't found the solution. I have made some suggestions, but I haven't found the solution. Uh, uh, if it's if it's a, a representative that I know, uh, I'm or I'm familiar enough with, uh, or I've established a relationship with them, you know, because maybe we're in committees together, um, you know, I've gone to them and said, um, you know, here's I I will print off whatever. It usually comes to me via email, and I will print off whatever the the constituent has has emailed. I'll print it off. I'll take it over to them. Say you know, and just say, hey, 
this person wants a response from me, you know, can, can you do that? And then it's up to them, you know, whether they will do that or not, but I don't mind carrying it over forward to them. Uh, I've done that, um, you know, with a lot of the, the problems we've been having with uh, our uh, Department of Labor, we've, everybody, you know, people are, are, are desperate, They're, they need answers, they're not getting answers. And so they'll send out emails to, to you know, anybody that might listen to them, you know, and so then I fielded questions before, and then I have, I've been able to direct them to the right person, but I also inform the representative, like, hey, you're going to be getting a, um, an email from this person, they need help with the, the Department of Labor, and, and it, you know, came to me. So I, I will try to do those kinds of things and try to, you know, just kind of bridge the gap a little bit, but I, I, I don't know of anything else um, to be able to get the attention of someone who, who won't respond. Okay, let's go ahead and um, let's see. I can jump in with some uh, attendee questions, Carrie, if you'd like. Um, okay. Uh, um. But first, there's lots of questions about the best way to contact your legislator. And it sounds to me like maybe as constituents, we should find out from our legislator the best way to contact him or her. Is that your advice? Um, yes, and the easiest way to do that is to contact their administrative assistant. So when you call their office, that's who you're going to get. You're not going to get the, you know, I'm not answering the phone at my desk. The administrative assistant does. And you can ask the administrative assistant, what would be the best way for me to be able to contact and get in contact with Susan? Okay. She will know, she will respond. Um, and so I would start there um, and, and just ask that. And if they don't know, they'll ask, they'll ask the representative and, and, and ask them, or if it's a senator and ask them, you know, especially when it's a new person, it's a new elected official, you know, they, they've not quite established that. And especially if you're not used to having an administrative assistant, you don't quite know how to navigate all of that, you know, so um, they, they will ask them and, and, and then hopefully they will respond in the way that they've asked to be contacted. And then also I hear you guys saying that personal stories are always more effective than yes. form anything, so. Yeah. Okay, so that's me. No. Um, we got another question about um, does Johnson County need a bill authorizing our voters to vote at any voting place on election day? Can you update us on the status of that bill or the status of uh, that whole issue? Uh, can, I was trying to find that. Let me find it on the chat here. I need to look at it again. It's the uh, you know, the bill that Sedgwick County is the first county that's going to try it, I think. Um, and if you guys don't know about it, we can find out and update members through a newsletter. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have any updates on that. Okay. Carrie, do you know anything about that? Not yet, no. Okay. Okay. And John, I don't know. Do you know anything about the, the voting? Uh, Last year in, in elections, uh, that was one of the issues that uh, was brought up and that we worked on. Um, you know, we're spoiled in Johnson County with our uh, ability to get internet and to get uh, connectivity. As you get into the Western part of our state, that becomes much, much more of an issue. Uh, you know, I, I was shocked to find out that we had students uh, in DeSoto that lived on the south side of 10 Highway going to the library or to McDonald's to get uh, internet because they couldn't get it on the south side of K-10. Well, we've remedied that, but we still haven't remedied what's going on in um, the western part of our state. So in order for me to be able to go someplace else and vote other than to my voting place or to one of the polling sites that we have set up for advanced ballot, um, we probably could do it in Johnson County but we would have a real hard time doing it in the Western part of our state. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of work to be done. And in fact, uh, one of the things that we put in the budget uh, for transportation was $50 million to try and get internet uh, connectivity to the Western part of our state. It's just, it's imperative. Uh, 
my business, if, if uh, we were looking for a place to relocate, uh, we wouldn't even consider looking at anything without connectivity. Uh, all of our business today is done, especially with the virus, uh, either by email, uh, by Zoom meetings, and those are impossible without connectivity. So um, we've got a long ways to go in our state to do that. And I looked at the federal government with some help with that. And I, I work with both of our federal senators uh, and, and really they, they understand the problem, but it comes down to an issue of money. And uh, what I'd like to see what we done in the twenties with the rural electrification of, of uh, the states uh, is to do the same thing with connectivity. Uh, I, I would like to see the federal government take this on as a challenge and, and uh, get everybody uh, connectivity into their houses. Thank you. Um, this question is about uh, the best, what is the best way to follow a specific bill or a handful of bills throughout the legislative session? Is there a proactive way to be notified if a specific bill would be discussed in a committee or by the entire House or Senate a day or two in advance? Or, um, yeah, so what do you advise your constituents on how to stay on top of the issues that are important to them? Anyone of you guys? You know, when you were looking at the website earlier and you can see the bills, um, if it's important to remember the, the House or the Senate bill number, because then you can look up uh, the bill itself and, and, and try to see where, where it's tracking. Like if you find out if it's going to Fed and State, you can also look at the calendar um, on the website and see when it might come up, if, if it's going to get a hearing in a certain committee. But I'll tell you, we have the problem, the same problem tracking, tracking bills. And, um, you know, so, uh, you know, we're going to take up the abortion amendment tomorrow morning at 830. And we just found out this afternoon. Um, and so, <laughs> um, yeah, we don't fun. always, we don't always get a lot of notice either. But that, that is one way of being able to do it is, is to see when it gets assigned to a committee, if it gets goes to a committee and then follow it there. So that could be a, a way of doing it. Um, so, Carrie, do you want to weigh in on that? Well, I think, you know, looking up the bill and I showed you on the bill page where, you know, it's introduced in committee and then, you know, does it get a hearing? You watch that and then, well, you know, they voted it out of committee. Then it, you know, it was introduced, uh, you know, into a chamber, either House or Senate. And then uh, it's worked from there. Um, so, you know, and it's, but it has to be passed on both sides, you know, and everything. There is a legislative hotline that you can also call. I don't have that number. I didn't have the flyer in front of me. I, it's back on my desk at the Capitol, uh, but it's through the uh, the library, the, the, the library in the Capitol. Um, and there's quite a there's quite a bit of information you can get through the library, but they do have a, a legislative hotline. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you. Um, the next question is, um, do you see value in legislative forums or those copies that the league and other organizations host? I do. I, I, I mean, I, uh, uh, I don't come to those, to the forums kicking and screaming or anything like that. Um, you know, it's sometimes it's hard getting it into a schedule and stuff, but I like it because I get to hear uh, more opinions from, from, you know, citizens and, and, you know, whether they're in my district or not, it doesn't matter to me. Um, it get it allows people to, to get more involved, I think, and more informed. Um, and the, the, you know, that was one thing that my father always taught me growing up that he, because he became a United States citizen and he took his citizenship extremely serious. And that was the thing that you had to become informed before you went out to vote. And, mm -hmm. and I think that that's, you know, that's how it's a give and take. I, 
uh, being able to hear, you know, what um, my thoughts might be or how I might be voting on a certain bill. Um, and then hearing people give, give us their opinion about, you know, why they think that bill is important to them. Because um, otherwise, I'm just, I don't know, I'm, I don't have any backing. I don't, I can't, I can't then go out and say, well, my constituents in, in District 23 are telling me this. If I don't have that information, I don't have that information. Mm -hmm. Mr. Scoble, would you like to comment on that? Yeah, I think I, I went to every forum that I was invited to, and I don't know how many of you uh, reside in Senate 11, but Jan Kessinger and myself held over 50 town halls. Um, yeah one a month uh, and we didn't just talk to our constituents we had people coming from all over uh, a, a four county area asking if they could attend and and we always uh, were proud and happy to have them but i got lots and lots of good information there we we tailored them at nine o'clock every uh, once a month uh, the same the same uh third saturday uh same location at the Leewood City Hall, and we would have anywhere from 50 to 120 people, depending on uh, whether Jan and I were speaking or we were able to bring in uh, the Lieutenant Governor, we had the Attorney General, we had Scott Swab, we had uh, Vicki Smith. Uh, we were going to invite the Governor, but we figured that we were going to have to get a bigger venue to do that, and so we, we just didn't do that. But um, that's where you get a lot of interface and if you want to talk about changing a legislator's mind, that's a place to do it and do it respectively. Uh, after we're finished, we'd always stick around for another half an hour. Usually it lasted 45 minutes. Uh, and then we would at least try and get going on our Saturdays. But um, I always prided myself in being able for people to, to talk with me. And, um, you know, I had a lot of, of uh, acquaintances and those in the legislature that poo pooed off answering emails and telephone calls. Uh, you know, my philosophy was is either do the job or let someone else do it. And uh, I always tried to answer phone calls and emails that weren't canned. Uh, but the big thing about it is, is that it's time consuming and nine o'clock to 11 o'clock on Saturday morning where the weather's nice is real hard to do, but we've done that once a month. Uh, and I prided myself in that. We had people from all over four, four counties come to those meetings. I'm speaking for the league and I know I'm speaking for mainstream coalition and other organizations when I say thank you for taking the time to show up to these events and uh, to meet with voters because it makes a real difference from voters perspective as well. That kind of leads to the next point. And the next question was, is there any point um, in contacting someone who's not representing you, you, your district? I'll, sure. I'll speak to that. Uh, I considered everybody uh, my constituent. Uh, I didn't work just for Senate District 11. I worked for the state of Kansas. My title was Kansas State Senator. And um, I talked to people from Western Kansas I talked to people from Southeast Kansas. I talked to people from Wichita. Um, I, I just think that if you're going to do the job, do the job. Um, and I would, I would tell you this, that if it was someone from uh, Overland Park, Leewood, uh, in the area that I represented, um, I normally would talk with them first, but I didn't tell someone from Western Kansas. In fact, I made a lot of friends in Goodland. Uh, I, I just, I think that, you know, if you're going to do the job and they had a transportation issue, I wanted to hear about it to see if I could solve the problem for them. And if they were having problems with their schools, I, I wanted to hear about it because I wanted to make things better for everyone, not just the people that lived in, in Overland Park and, and Leewood. I totally agree with Senator Schoolwell. Um, that's exactly right. And especially, you know, to hear from other people from across the state that, that are interested in any kind of uh, either bills or information that is being said in any of the three committees that I'm on. Um, uh, I'm, I'm always very open and interested in hearing, uh, you know, what people have to say, and especially if they have some concerns. And, you know, and if there's, um, um, 
it's it's been great to be able to talk to people all across the state and and uh, you know trying to help them navigate you know just the website and how to how to follow bills things like that and and uh, so it, yeah it's been it's been really awesome to be able to do that. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is: Do you have any suggestions on how to promote primary elections? The league, as you know, is nonpartisan, and other uh, you know is focused on increasing voter registration. But do you have any ideas for promoting primaries? Good, good. Well, man, I wish we could give lollipops or something. Uh, <laughs> we need to we need to do something, but. Uh, too, too many people take these elections for granted. And um, the abortion bill is, and I have not seen it, but it's going to be probably on the primary in August and you're gonna have 30% of the people amending the constitution of the state of Kansas, which I think is wrong. I don't care where you're at on the side of, of abortion. Uh, and there's no compromise with this, but I do think that it needs to go to the general election to where we have more voters rather than less voters. And uh, I, I voiced that concern and, and uh, that uh, was something that I was very adamant about. And if I were in Topeka uh, and, and I was voting again, it would be no, unless that went on the uh, 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 general election and, and not the primary. So I think, I think the other thing is, is that we need to, we need to gather interest in nonpartisan elections uh, too many people take for granted what I done on the Overland Park City Council, but I affected the people in Overland Park and the, and the surrounding areas a lot more on the City Council than I did in Topeka. Mm -hmm. And I've talked with Kevin Yoder about this at length, a personal friend. Uh, you know, what I done at the state uh, was much more impactful than what he does in Washington, D.C. And the further it seems that we get govern, government away from us, um, the less it's responsive. Uh, in Overland Park, when there was a pavement problem, um, it wasn't red or blue or green. It was just a, a hole that needed patched. And that's what local governments do. And, and um, I, I think that if you just watch local governments and people could understand how they affect or affected by local governments, we'd see a lot, a lot more participation in those, in those elections. Uh, and, you know, it, I went through a, a primary with one of the races that I ran in Overland Park with 8% of the registered voters voting in a primary. Um, certainly this, this year, because um, the, the abortion bill is gonna get passed, it'll be on the, in, on the August uh, election. Um, that, that in and of itself should draw out voters. Uh, but when we don't have something like that, or it's not at the general election, you know, where we have a, like a presidential race, um, I, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't understand uh, why people don't take these primaries uh, seriously. I, I don't, and um, I, it, 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 sometimes it is left up to the parties to try to promote it and try to get people out to vote and then, and then partner up with League of Women Voters to get people registered. Uh, but I don't know. Um, we're going to have to take some, some ideas from the Georgia, from the last Georgia election, the Senate election, and, and, and just kind of take some ideas from Stacey Abrams as to you know, how, how they did it. I know it took the, her 10 years. It took them 10 years to get to this point. And we don't have 10 years, uh, but we've, we've got to get going now uh, with, with voter registration. I think the great thing is, is, you know, you're not just, you're registering a voter today, but you're going to be able to utilize your voting power really soon instead of, you know, having to wait two, four years from now. So we've got time to do massive voter registrations right now. No matter you know what party the person might be affiliated with, we have got we we all going to have to come together and and um, uh, and do a lot more voter registrations. I'm especially in, um, interested in doing voter registration with the the Latino population um, and also the uh, African population because there's there's several churches 
just just down the road from where I live that are um, uh, the the people that worship there are from Africa. Um, and so uh, I'm going to try to partner up with some of the, the church, local churches around me and, and see if we can do some more more voter registration, try to get more people involved in our political system. We would love to help you in those efforts. Um, That'd be great. Uh, we've got, okay, so all the people who joined us tonight are invested people. They wouldn't be here on a Thursday night otherwise. What would each of you say to them, like, <laughs> I, they're probably frustrated in some ways, and um, is it worth their time to advocate um, at the state level? Um, what what do you what would you say to the people on the call about um, the efficacy of what we're talking about tonight? I know, I don't know Senator Scuba, if you want to speak on that first. I definitely will. Um, you know, when when uh, we're home, um, I, I still have a full time job, and uh, so, so I and I work usually from eight till five o'clock, uh, sometimes even longer. But I've always got time in the morning for a cup of coffee, and uh, I've had a number of, of voters contact me and ask if I would take five minutes and have a cup of coffee with them, and I'm always happy to do that. But I, I think that if you could make some kind of a uh, push to get to know these people that represent you uh, on a personal basis, uh, and you don't have to go to each other's house for dinner, but to where when I see you, I know your name and you know my first name. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't believe this, but uh, Stephanie Clayton, who I adore, uh, told me that when I was elected, my name was not John Scoogle anymore, it was Senator. And in the halls in Topeka, that's the only thing that I knew. And I mean, uh, no one called me John, they all called me Senator. But um, I think the big thing is, is that if you can get to the point that you, and, and you can't waste people's time, but you know, five minutes for a cup of coffee just to get to know them uh, will go a long ways. And when you see them in the hall, uh, I don't know how many people I, I had asked me if they could walk with me from meeting to meeting. And I was always happy to do that. Uh, and again, your mind's racing 75 different directions, but uh, you can always be courteous and, and talk with them about what they would like to discuss. But if you can make some kind of a personal connection with them when they're not in Topeka, I think that goes a long ways. Great. Representative Ruiz. Yeah, I I agree with everything that the senator just just mentioned, and uh, I think it um, um, I I think part of it is because just the way I was raised, you know, again by uh, a, a parents who were very politically involved, um, and you know, being informed as much as possible, but also knowing that there's power in the vote and and it it um it uh i think about my dad every time i vote and i think about what he went through as an immigrant and to become a, a united states citizen and and i think about that and i honor him every time i vote and and i think to to it it, it is frustrating we're frustrated now i'm very frustrated now uh <clears throat> and it's going to be even worse mm -hmm. tomorrow but um, we we have to strive to try to find common ground amongst amongst ourselves, and um, I I personally need support. I need support of the people around me. I need your support to say, keep doing what you're doing. You know, I know it's frustrating, but keep doing what you're doing, and I'll reciprocate. I'll tell you the same thing. I know it's hard that what of uh, the time and the effort that you do for the League of Women Voters and volunteering. I know it takes up time, but it, you're dedicated to it. And we just have to keep pushing ourselves, you know, and, and keep supporting each other and, and find those little glimmers of hope that we can just hang on to, you know, for the next week or so. And then, and then we just, you know, we, and we move on, but we just, we've got to support each other with it. We can't give up, we can't give up on our country. We can't give up on our state. 
Thank you. We all need to hear that. And, uh, and we so value you guys squeezing us in tonight um, with all the other things you have going on. So please uh, accept our appreciation and thanks for joining us and we'll let you go. So Carrie can then take us into some of the specific actions that we can focus on. So thank you. Very thank much. you again. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much for having us. Okay. So, Carrie, you want to move right in? Okay. Uh, let me get things here. I'm going to share my screen. And let's go. Okay. okay. Okay, so what we would like you to do, if you would like to be more involved, is to be part of our observer core. Um, and I'm talking about the state observer core. I'm hoping you have a local observer core there in Johnson County. And so you go ahead and follow uh, selected committees and, and bills that we are targeting that you would follow to be something that you're interested in. For several years, I followed education because I had been a teacher. And I, you know, when John Scopel just talked about how he supported edu an education bill that kept us out of the court, I was so happy to hear that. Um, so, you know, find something that you like. And then um, join us. We will be meeting with um, our consultant, Paul Johnson, again on February 10th. We meet at noon. So, you know, if you work, hopefully you can do it over your lunch hour. Um, and we meet about twice a month with Paul. We can... Um, he has um, the latest happenings in the legislature, but he's also great for, you know, he's really great to advise us. We ask him all kinds of questions and he's been with us for, or he's been doing this consulting and lobbying for like 40 years. So he knows his stuff. Um, sometimes we'll have guest legislators own and that's really helpful to get their perspective. Um, we advocate on our studied positions. You know, this year we're studying criminal justice. So we have all these positions that we've studied and therefore we know that we have the right information. We know it's been vetted. So there's positions there on your joke website, on um, the state website, and also on um, the U.S. website. So, um, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this a while ago, but on the um, and um, when we're looking at the uh, Google form, we even have a place to go ahead and click on the state league position so we can find that. In fact, I'm gonna stop sharing this. Okay, you can go down this and you enter your bill and the title number come down here and you can find where we talk about positions and advocacy. So there are, um, and on our issues and advocacy page you can go ahead and you can click on like last year we studied medical indigence you can go in and click and find our policy um, so while you're working that is very helpful, I think. So 
that is something I wanted to talk with you about. Let's see, I also, um, and of course you will go ahead and receive a information from Kathleen. They'll go ahead and send an email with a lot of this information on it to help you. Um, let me see. And then did you want to mention the, the legislative call every week or, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about when I was talking about the um, the call that we do with um, Paul Johnson. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. Okay. That's twice a month. Okay. And so then, let me see if there's anything else. Um, there was another one, but I guess maybe not. So, are there questions that? any of you have that you would like to ask me? Let's see, I look down here in the chat and looks like there is one. Um, I think we covered them. Um, I think, yeah. I think we did. So Kathleen, do you want to close us out? Yes. Yes. I'm so sorry I went off in cyberspace, but, but I'm back. Um, well, first of all, we thank, Carrie, we thank you for, for, show, for sharing your expertise with us and for joining us tonight. And, and for all the people in the audience, watch for the follow-up survey so that you can... Um, Tell us what you think, and if you feel like you learned, learned to be more confident and, and to know what to do when you're advocating on behalf of legislation. And finally, um, we want to remind you of our February 6th meeting on redistricting, redistricting and it's going to be a, a, a great session. And you can register at lwvjoco.org. And... Thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. And I'll see, see you eventually somewhere. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.